Uh, you are making a uh, big acquisition, at least a big acquisition uh, in your space and for your company, Barry. Yes, um, so DCG just acquired uh, Luno, uh, which is uh, one of the leading Bitcoin and digital asset exchanges um, focused on the emerging and the frontier markets. So for, for those uninitiated, let's talk a little bit about what, what Luno is. I, I think a lot of people, or at least, at least a lot of our audience know about Coinbase, for example, in the United States. Um, is it fair for me to compare uh, Luno to being the, the sort of coin base of the, the emerging markets? Yeah, I, I think that, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the opportunity to help uh, educate the world and build on ramps <coughs> to, uh, to, uh, to the crypto space, uh, enable people to buy Bitcoin and to, uh, really kind of create a better financial system is a, is a mission that Luno has been on uh, since it's founded seven, since it was founded seven years ago. We actually were a seed investor in Luno, actually in Coinbase as well. So we've, saw, we've watched this company grow from five people to almost 400 people, five million customers all around the world. And with this acquisition, uh, we get to accelerate the growth of it and bring it to uh, every corner of the globe. Uh, Barry, you know, a lot of people uh, have viewed this pandemic as an accelerant to the world of crypto uh, in the United States and, and frankly, uh, large parts around the world. W what has it done to the business of Luno during, let's say, the last six months? Well, I think most of the companies in the Bitcoin space uh, are seeing um, some fantastic growth this year. As you, uh, as you may know, Bitcoin is, is probably one of the best, if not the best performing assets this year. Uh, so Luno is seeing uh, record month over month growth uh, in, in transactional volume and revenue and, and customers. And uh, you know, we're looking forward to accelerating that super quickly with the DCG balance sheet. Barry, the, the, the flip side of this is, you know, we all talk about how Bitcoin and some of these other cryptocurrencies are, are supposed to uh, be operating, if you will, in terms of price quite independently. At least that's the idea from the markets. And yet, when the markets have gone down and we've seen the downdraft recently, there's been a downdraft on Bitcoin, too. Yeah, sure. Look, Bitcoin trading is uh, not for the faint of heart. Um, the, uh, the, the, the downs uh, are amplified, the ups are amplified. But, uh, you know, look, so far this year, Bitcoin has uh, played its, uh, its role as a diversifier, uh, as, a, as, a, as an asset that, like, it's, it's performed quite well this year. It's up about 40 percent this year. But, Barry, what's the fa fair market value of Bitcoin? I mean, this is the, maybe the existential philosophical question here, but what do, you, what, do you, what do you honestly think it is? And, and how would you even decide to, how you were going to value it? We, we look at Bitcoin um, as the next generation's version of gold. Uh, you know, gold is a, a eight, nine trillion dollar asset class. And so, you know, I think over time, Bitcoin is going to capture a larger and larger portion of that, of that asset class. Look, Bitcoin is a couple hundred billion dollars in value. And when you start having Investors like Paul Tudor Jones and Mark Lazary and Chavath Palabatia, you know, saying, hey, look, it's okay to put 50, 100 basis points in this asset class. It, it really doesn't take a lot of money to, to, to move uh, a large right. amount of the gold market into the Bitcoin market. What do you make of uh, Dave Portnoy and his comments about Bitcoin? He's he's a he's a he's an entertaining guy. And, uh, you know, look, I think it's fantastic. Uh, that he's bringing his followers into the asset class, whether they're buyers or sellers, more liquidity is, is good. And, but ultimately, most people, once you fall in love with Bitcoin, you uh, tend, to, tend to stick with it.